Hi, I'm Dawn Willingham, and my favorite hymn is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. My oldest daughter, April, and I, every time one of us starts to hum the song, both of us will sing it all day. So please enjoy this hymn. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we are blessed to be able to gather as God's people in our various locations and to know that we are present with Christ, uh, just as surely as he promised he would be present with us when we gather in his name. We welcome all who are worshiping from our YouTube uh, channel or our Facebook page. If you haven't had a chance to do so, there's a, a link either to the side or underneath where you can find our worship bulletin for this morning. So I encourage you to go ahead and, and link to that and open it up so you can participate in worship uh, with your singing at home or wherever you may be, as well as the prayers and liturgical responses as surely we worship uh, together as God's people this day. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, a tradition in the summer, on the third uh, Sunday of each summer, we have our summer hope moments. And so we're very blessed this morning to hear from one of our three uh, Community Youth Kingdom Vision partners, our Lutheran Services Carolinas, and an update on uh, their ministries, especially their foster uh, care ministries and for uh, youth and young adults transitioning out of foster care as well. We're thankful to hear that hope uh, moment this morning. And also following the hope moment uh, during worship this morning, our annual blessing of the college students. We're very excited that many of them have recorded a message just about where they're gonna be in college and what that's gonna look like for them this upcoming semester. And we truly keep all of them in our prayers as they go through uh, the things in quite a different way, a unique semester for them just as surely as, as it was in the spring. We hold all of them in our prayers. Well, good morning, Living Springs Lutheran Church. My name is Dylan Gunnels, and I am the development officer here at Lutheran Services of the Carolinas. 
I pray that this day and every day you are experiencing the peace that surpasses all understanding and that you are resting in the steadfast grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just like you and everyone else, our agency is in uncharted territories, navigating new waters as we too have been affected by this pandemic. But we are proud to say that we have continued to serve the most vulnerable populations at our highest capacity without missing a beat. It's the support of Lutherans and Lutheran churches like yourself that have kept us going. Your support with prayers and well wishes, support of time and talents, and maybe even treasure. That is what has kept us going. And so we are forever grateful and we say thank you. Since the 1960s, Lutheran Services has prided ourselves in the fact that we walk alongside each person that we serve. Following Jesus' words in John 10, 10, that he came that they may have life and that they may have life abundantly. We walk right alongside each person that we serve, helping them to reach an abundance in their life. We are proud to do that all the way from senior services in North Carolina and in South Carolina with child and family services from adoption to foster care to refugee and immigrant services to assisting children who need short-term foster care to assisting adults with developmental delays, adults with traumatic brain injuries. We take pride in the work that we do we are happy to say that we are serving those clients well. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up our transitional living program, something that your congregation has highly supported. We've been able to serve over 20 clients in this program who are transitioning out of the foster care program. We've assisted them in finding long-term housing, full-time full employment, and navigating what it looks like to live, quote, as an adult. And we thank you so much for the support that you've given to that program to make that transitional living program a reality. And we look forward to continuing to update you as that program continues to grow. If you have any questions regarding Lutheran Services Carolinas, if you want to learn more about what we do, and especially if you want to learn more about how you can partner with us in the ministry, please visit our website at lscarolinas.net or please reach out to me. I know that you can obtain my contact information uh, from your pastor or from your church council members. Thank you all so much for what you do. And I look forward to meeting you at the time when we've gotten out of these uncharted waters. Have a happy and blessed Sunday. We prepare to worship our Lord by receiving the good news of God's forgiveness, and we may stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin, and we may kneel before our Creator wherever we are this morning. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. 
Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us worship our Lord in song. pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of faith and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. O God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
So if we were all here in the sanctuary, we would be gathered up here on the steps, all our children and youth and young at heart. But it's good that we're gathered uh, wherever you're at. Maybe you move a little closer to your screen or whatever you're watching or listening from this morning. And we're just excited to be gathered here as God's children. Uh, we use the phrase God's children and we think about each of us being a child and how God puts some very special people in our lives. Uh, maybe a mother, a father, a stepmother, stepfather, uh, someone who, who's adopted us as a father or mother, whatever that may look like, these very special people that God's put in our lives who care for you very, very much and love you very much. And in today's gospel lesson, we're going to hear a story about Jesus. He had gone to a whole nother country, a kind of a foreign land, and there in that land, there was a mother who loved her daughter very much. She loved her daughter so much. And even though she lived in a foreign land and actually worshiped in a different way from Jesus, she had heard that Jesus was coming and she had faith that Jesus could do something powerful because her little girl was sick and she had problems and her little girl needed help. And, and the mother came and she found Jesus. And even though there were a lot of rules in her day that said she should, uh, she, because she was from a different land, she shouldn't talk to Jesus or she should stay away from Jesus. She didn't care anything about those rules because her love for her daughter was so great and she believed that God was at work in Jesus. And so she came to Jesus and when she got there, there were these men, the disciples, who said, send her away. She keeps shouting and bothering us. And they wanted to get rid of her. But even then, her faith in Jesus was so strong, and she kept coming so she could talk with Jesus. And she and Jesus talked for a while about some of the things that people might have thought about her or some of the rules of their day that would have kept them apart. And then finally... Jesus was able to share God's love in a powerful way. And her little girl who was sick way back at home, Jesus' love was so great that it made her little girl well. And he said, woman, you have such great faith, how you trusted in me and trusted in God's love, right? And so that's wonderful. You may not, you, when you go to bed at night, you may say your prayers with your mom or dad or whoever is special in your home. But you may not think about the fact that that person, your mom or dad or stepmom or stepdad or whoever it may be, that they love you so much that they take you to Jesus every day and every night in their prayers. And they lift you up and hold you up in their prayers, just like the woman came and lifted up her little girl in her prayer to Jesus that she would be made well. So today is very special in a moment the screen's going to change, and you're going to see some people on the screen who are loved very much by their moms and dads or stepmoms or stepdads and whoever it may be. And at one time, they were little children just like you are, but now they've grown up and they're young adults and they're headed off to college or graduate school or seminary. Like one day, you may be growing up and headed off to college or, or graduate school or maybe seminary or technical school or whatever. So today, we're going to do something very special. After we've seen them on the screen and heard about what God's doing in their lives and where they're going to school uh, this in the upcoming months, we're going to pray for them together so that our prayers can be joined with the prayers of their moms and dads and stepmoms and stepdads and these other people who love them very much, that God will help them and watch over them as they go uh, to school and college or university or seminary or graduate school this year. And a couple of Sundays from now, we're going to be praying for each and every one of you as you start a new school year, uh, whatever that may look like in a different way. All right. So our prayer this morning we're going to pray it after we hear from all these special boys and girls that have grown up and are headed off to college. All right, well, here we go. Hi, I'm Jack Arnold. I am a sophomore at Clemson, and I am studying computer science. Hi, I'm Candy Bracey. I will be going into my freshman year at the University of South Carolina, and my major is middle-level education with a minor in business management. Thank you. Nick Credicos, graduating from USC in December with a degree in economics. 
My name is Colin Flores, where I'm a freshman at Valley Forge Military College, where I'll be majoring in criminal justice. Hi, I am Elijah Harris, and I'll be starting my freshman year at Lander University, and my focus will be financial. Hi, my name is Rachel Hurlbert. I'm graduating from Lander University in December with a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Levitt. I am going to be a junior at the College of Charleston, and I'm studying public health. My name is London. I am in my third year at Midlands Tech, getting my associate's degree for early childhood education, and I'm hoping to go for a four-year at um, USC for uh, elementary education. Hey, y'all. I'm Adriana McMurphy. I am starting my first year at Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, and I will be focusing on a Master's in Divinity. Hi, I'm Austin Padgett. I'm starting my first year at South Carolina, and my major is Sports and Entertainment Management. Hey, my name is Laura Sturt. I'll be a junior at Clemson University, continuing my degree in bioengineering. Julia Chenover is a junior at Clemson University, majoring in genetics and biochemistry. Hi, I'm Caitlin Toma. I'm an upcoming freshman at Wofford College, and I plan on majoring in psychology. Good morning, Living Springs. My name is Isaac Taylor, and I'm a seminarian at the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary. What wonderful images, these young disciples, these people of faith. And so now, God of knowledge and wisdom, as this new academic year begins, we lift up our students in colleges, universities, and seminaries as we pray. Oh God, you bring children into our lives, and in your grace they grow into young adults. Thank you for families and friends, congregations, teachers, coaches, and mentors whose positive influence has been a gift to these young people. You invite them as young adults to now further explore your world and create new ways of thinking and understanding in your grace. Thank you for minds and hearts and hands with which to discover and learn. Keep our students humble and curious. Help them persevere in their studies and overcome obstacles. Give them courage to maintain open minds and resilience in turbulent times, especially with the unique challenges of this pandemic season. Lord, in your mercy. And so now we ask for your special blessings upon Jack, Kennedy, Nick, Colin, Elijah, Rachel, Sarah, Connor, London, Adriana, Austin, Laura, Julia, Caitlin, Matthew, and Perry, and Isaac. Hold these dear ones in your arms of care, that they continue to mature into the persons you created them to be. May they flourish in their studies this year and grow deeper in their faith. Filled with the love and affirmation of their families and this congregation, may each one be a source of light for others in their physical and virtual academic communities this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy and dependent always upon your grace, in the name of Christ our Lord, we offer these prayers of blessing to you, in whom we put all our confidence and hope. Amen. And even though we are spread out in our homes and other places, uh, we would do this if we were together in the sanctuary. So at this time, uh, we give thanks to God and acknowledge the work of God in the lives of these young people as we celebrate what God will accomplish in them this year ahead. The first reading... The prophet calls upon Israel to do justice in view of God's imminent intervention to save. Righteousness and obedience define who belongs to the Israelite community, not race, nationality, or any other category. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, 
to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a reading from Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your shame out among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. The second reading. God has not rejected Israel. Rather, the call and gifts of God are irrevocable, so that while all have been dis disobedient, God has mercy upon all. A reading from Romans. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of light. Thank mm -hmm. you. The good news of Jesus comes to us in the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you still also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. O God, long ago, a woman came to you on foreign soul, carrying heavy burdens in her hearts with regard to her child. So, too, we come before you this morning on uh, this foreign soil, uh, centuries later, carrying burdens in our own hearts from our own lives, uh, whatever they might be. Open our hearts to your presence here among us and to your voice that empowers faith which can accomplish all things. Speak to us by your Spirit that we might know your will of love and grace for all people, including each of us this day. For in your name we pray. Amen. It is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Could it be somehow that even 2,000 years ago, Jesus was already an expert on the spread of the coronavirus? The research that shows the danger spread patterns from just the mouth of one infected person in an enclosed room or among a crowd simply breathing out the virus, not to mention the increased distance of the spread pattern if the person would be coughing, laughing, singing, or shouting. It is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Now, of course, in today's gospel lesson set 2,000 years ago, Jesus was not talking about a coronavirus. But I think all those diagrams of spread patterns that we see again and again on the news showing particles coming out of a person's mouth, they nonetheless help us understand the powerful truth of what Jesus was saying. That words matter, deeply matter. For just like particles that come out of our mouths spread the potentially deadly coronavirus to dozens around us, so too, Jesus says, the words that come out of our mouths spread a potentially deadly hatred that infects our human hearts. Just pause a moment and let that image sink into your mind. All those images of virus spread patterns we've seen in recent months. What if those spread images were about another type of virus, the virus of human hatred and evil thoughts? One word is spoken and it comes out of the mouth and it spreads to contaminate dozens of other individuals in the room who then become carriers of that virus of hatred to others. Even innocent children who will hear them repeated in their homes or co-workers or teammates or unsuspecting strangers in a grocery store or who will overhear those viral words of hatred being spread out of one mouth and the next mouth and the next and the next. And in our modern world, the spread of defiling words does not just occur mouth to mouth, but one word can spread like wildfire from our Facebook posts, Twitter accounts, and all forms of social media. Just ask one of our youth how something posted on social media can spread like wildfire through a school and end up being devastating for a young person. A major contributing factor, experts tell us, to alarming suicide rates among teens, and now even preteens, and yes, even children in our modern world. What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, Jesus says. This is what defiles. The word defile is a very strong and rare Greek word in the New Testament. 
It literally means taking something that is special or holy and demeaning it, treating it as if it were common and ordinary, taking something which is beautifully clean and dirtying it up, making it filthy or foul, contaminating, polluting, desecrating. What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, Jesus says. This is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. Unless we try to get ourselves off the hook with this list of evil intentions, remember what else Jesus teaches in the Gospel of Matthew. Remember from his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 where Jesus says, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a sister or brother, then you will be liable to judgment. He does the same with adultery. He says, But I say to you that everyone who looks at another with lust has already committed adultery with another in the heart. Or later in chapter 7 where Jesus asks each of us, Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? No, this virus of evil infecting the human heart is not something any of us can avoid by pointing the finger elsewhere any more than we can avoid our own personal responsibility in contributing to a pandemic by pointing the finger to someone else, pretending as if we ourselves might not be a virus carrier just because we haven't been running a fever or don't see any symptoms in ourselves. As humanity, our hearts have all been infected by the age-old pandemic of hatred and evil thoughts. We are all carriers. And the words that come out of us and are spread from one person to another or what defile us as human beings. Taking us beautiful, pure human creatures made in the image of God for the purpose of reflecting God's grace and pure, unconditional love for all, and contaminating us, polluting us, turning us from something special and holy into carriers of sewage, self-centered hatred and meanness. I grew up on a school playground hearing myself and my classmates always say to each other, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Ever say that as a child? The great irony, of course, is that when myself or one of my classmates would say that, it was precisely because we had been hurt, often deeply hurt by someone's insulting words. I remember standing on my school playground in the first grade and looking into the eyes of Martina Smith as she stood all alone and shouted back at the rest of us in the class, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And as Martina said those words, tears were streaming out of her eyes. See, Martina was the only student of color in our class. And there on the playground that day, all kinds of words had been hurled at her. Words that my buddies had learned from their daddies at home. Words defiling, polluting, contaminating that beautiful child created in the image of God. And lest I point my finger somewhere else, there I was on the playground remaining silent and joining in the defilement along with my other classmates because of the laughter coming out of our mouths. How sad to think that here in our own country, this week marked the third anniversary of people still shouting those same defiling words on the streets of Charlottesville. Five decades after little boys were shouting those words on a playground at an innocent little girl. Those same words that a young teenager from here in the Midlands encountered on the internet 
that would eventually motivate him to walk into a Bible study and murder nine people who were praying with him. Jesus knew the power of words. Defiling words that spew from human mouths, reflecting deep evils held in the human heart. In his day, Jesus knew how the words of the Pharisees and the words of his own people were used to demean and defile the fullness of humanity that God so loved. For centuries, Jesus' ancestors, God's chosen people, had rightly celebrated the special covenant that God had made with them out of all the people of the earth. They celebrated the special blessing God had given them in the promised land and the covenant with Abraham and Sarah and their ancestors. They celebrated the great blessing God had given them in the law of Moses in the Old Testament and how it set them apart to be a special holy witness for the Lord in the world. But in celebrating their own special role, they have begun to build barriers to separate themselves from the rest of God's human family. The Pharisees had gotten so obsessed, so blinded, Jesus says, with the rules of Sabbath and ritual cleanliness and dietary regulations that they could no longer see God's love and purpose and hope for not just their nation of God's people, but for all the peoples of the world. The Pharisees and other societal leaders of the people had allowed their narrow, blinded focus on these religious laws and regulations to truly blind them to other parts of the Holy Scriptures. Parts like Isaiah 56 and Psalm 67, which we read earlier today, the promise that foreigners would come to God's holy mountain and God's temple would be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. I think about those beautiful words from Psalm 67 every time we go over to Krista Ray, our Living Springs Lutheran mission partner, and see the joy of our Latino sisters and brothers praising God in their own language and traditions, a living vision of God's ancient promise, especially when we think, when we think that from the biblical perspective, it is two we English-speaking people who are the foreigners of which scriptures speak. Yes, it was a hard thing for the Pharisees and others to accept. It's always hard for human beings, ourselves included, when God acts to do a new thing. It was so hard to accept for those in Jesus' day so hard to accept that he would get run out of his hometown synagogue and then finally get handed over to the Romans to be executed on a cross. It was difficult to accept for the first century people of God that after centuries of having a unique special role among all the peoples of the earth, that now God was acting to finally do this new thing that God had promised. Paul reminds us today in Romans that this new thing did not mean the chosen people of Israel were no longer special in God's heart, but rather than in Jesus, God was now acting to declare that all humanity was special in God's heart. For in Jesus, God was working to bring hope and salvation to fulfill the promise for all the peoples of the earth. As the New Testament ultimately records in Ephesians 2. You might remember the passage. For Christ is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. It's no coincidence that Jesus' teaching about defiling words is immediately followed by Jesus intentionally traveling into a foreign land where of all people he will be encountered by a Canaanite and a woman. 
Someone who worshiped completely differently from God's people. Someone who, according to the religious laws of the Old Testament, should not even be allowed to speak with a rabbi like Jesus. Someone who should be sent away, run off, just like the disciples wanted to do. Someone who is actually referred to as a dog in the common sayings of Jesus' day. By the way, the verse, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It's not something scholars say Jesus created on his own. He is uplifting a common saying that had been used to demean the Canaanites and others of his day. Almost as if Jesus was uplifting its absurdity in the light of the great true faith that is actually being demonstrated by this foreign woman with a demon-possessed child. In fact, it is this foreign Canaanite woman of a different religion who is the first in Matthew's gospel to address Jesus with the full official title of the Messiah. Lord, son of David, she calls him. Did you catch that? By the way, it is also Matthew's gospel that tells us that it is foreign men of a different religion who first fall down and worship Jesus. Those magi who bring him gifts and fall to worship him when he is still yet an infant. While Jesus indeed comes to bring hope to the lost sheep of Israel, as he points out, it turns out that this is merely the starting point of his ministry. And now the great next step begins to unfold in Jesus' encounter with this Canaanite woman on foreign soil. When all is said and done, as difficult as it may be to accept, it is this foreign woman of a different religion who acknowledges Jesus as God's Messiah. And it is this bold, persistent, vocal woman demeaned as a dog by the religious culture in her own sort of Me Too mo movement. This woman, not the disciples or the religious leaders, whom Jesus in the end will lift up as an example of truly great faith. Faith not limited by religious regulations and customs. Faith not limited by territory or national boundaries or pride. Faith not hampered by common accepted phrases or words that spew forth from the mouth to defile others or reveal the evil intentions of the human heart. But rather faith bursting through all those barriers to be spoken out loud by a Canaanite woman and hurting for her afflicted daughter. Words that will acknowledge a humble need for mercy in her life. Words that will acknowledge Jesus, a lowly carpenter's son, as the promised one sent by God for all humanity to bring grace forgiveness, compassion, healing, and hope to all the peoples of the earth. To make irrelevant all the kingdoms of the earth and bring to reality the good news of the kingdom of heaven, which has come near for all in Jesus, even this Canaanite woman. And so, sisters and brothers, may this be the spread pattern that spews forth from our mouths. Not a virus of hatred and evil intentions of our human hearts, but rather a worldwide pandemic of words of joy and grace flowing out of new and transformed hearts of faith, hearts filled with Jesus, the Lord, the incarnate word of God, a love revealed for all the Canaanite women of our world, for all the little Martinas still in our world, for our sisters and brothers at Christa Ray in every mission and every language across the world, for each and every one of us, you and me, we Gentile foreigners, for every child of God, all nations of the world, 
the one humanity, the family of God. Let this word of hope come forth from hearts of faith and be spread from our mouths. In Jesus' name, amen. with the love of God, we lift up our voices and confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of our, your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough for outcasts in our villages, cities, and town, for those grieving and for those who need your healing. We pray especially for Sam Gordon, Sam. Debbie Smith, Debbie. Tammy Mancuso, Sam. Ed Brennan, yeah. Austin Padgett, Austin. Sue Loveless, Sue. Bob Jorgensen, Bob. Mary Joyce Newton, Mary Joyce. Margaret Blank, Margaret. Charles Kaufman, Charles. Bunny Talbert, Judy. 
Ellie Spry, Vicki Mayers, Tori Neal, Donna Neal, Kelly Cozell, Lila Bell, Wilma Bracey, Charles Levitt, Parker Robinson, and those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Joy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. as you live, as in you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, here. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them in the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, as we face ongoing uncertainties around this coronavirus, we pray for our nation and the world. Protect the most vulnerable among us, those who are currently sick, in isolation, or awaiting test results. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to scientists, vaccine researchers, and healthcare, food, and other essential workers as their daily work puts them still at risk. Fill us with patience and guide us as we consider how best to continue to respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear or self-centeredness, but with compassion, concern, and acts of loving service for others, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us verbally share the peace of our Lord. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Rob. Peace be with you, Rob. In these ongoing days, we continue to give our offerings of love for our Lord. We are so thankful for all the offerings that uh, come to show our thankfulness to God uh, through our uh, Givelify app or the bank arrangements people have made or offerings that are dropped off here every week. And so at this time, we present the offering plate represent all, representing all those offerings of love that continue to support the ministry of Christ uh, in this and every place. Let us pray. O oh God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we may proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your spirit of love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The elements we have blessed will be distributed in the parking lot uh, after this service, uh, and we invite you to come from 1130 to 1230. Friends of Jesus, come to this table. Receive nourishment for your journey. Thanks be to God. the table of the
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. God.